quack, 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 Hey sports fans, Sexy Matt the Pharaoh Wizard here, and I'm talking to you today about the Ducks! The Mighty Ducks! Yes. One of the more, I think, forgotten uh, franchises in time, and I think the best sports movie franchise ever, and I'm going to possibly say one of the better trilogies of all time, to be honest, and I'm going to tell you why. Um, obviously, I'm a big Ducks fan. I love these movies. They started my love of hockey. Uh, they're just really enjoyable, earnest, goofy movies, and I love them. And I think they need some time in the spotlight. I think the Nostalgia Critic maybe touched on them once or twice, but I really want to go in depth and tell you why these are great movies. So for those of you born in the new millennium and don't know, back in the early 90s, sports movies were a big thing. We were getting sports movies left and right, kids ones, adult ones, funny ones, serious ones, sports, sports, sports. And Disney decided they wanted to get in on this, and in 1992, they came out with The Mighty Ducks. And I like to refer to this one as the Disney-fied version of The Bad News Bears. It's a lot like it, hits a lot of the same steps but doesn't go that extra edge that the, the Bad News Bears had. This one's very family-friendly, early 90s Disney. Very Disney. So the plot of the first movie is Gordon Bombay is a hotshot lawyer in Minneapolis, Minnesota. And let's just get this joke out of the way, because you're all thinking it. Emilio Estevez. The mighty duck man, I swear to God, I was there. I was like, Emilio, Emilio. So yeah, Gordon Bombay is a hotshot lawyer in Minneapolis, Minnesota, which is weird to think that there's people living in Minneapolis, Minnesota. So I always just imagine this being Minneapolis. I, I, I don't know. People probably live there. I don't know. But he gets a DUI and is sentenced to community service. So apparently in the 90s, when you got a DUI, you just got community service. It didn't ruin your entire fucking life. And then... <laughs> The other part that's funny is his community service is coaching kids. They also do this in Always Sunny in Philadelphia. I've seen it in other TV shows and movies. Is this a thing? I've never. I've only been convicted of arson, so I've never had community service. Is this like a normal community service thing where you friggin' teach kids? Like, hey, you're dangerous and you drink a lot. Take care of some kids. It's weird. But anyway, so he's in charge. He gets has to be a coach for the District 5 team. District 5. And they're the ragtag misfit kids. They're not good. They, they don't have money. They don't got uniforms. They're just this crazy bunch of kids. And Bombay first starts off as your average coach jerk. He doesn't want to be there. He's just going to get this done. He's teaching him to cheat and things like that. But this movie passes that pretty quickly, if you ask me, because l look at Emilio. He can't play a dick. He's not a dick. I mean, the biggest dick move I think he could make is like, hey, I ate the last cookie, but I saved you half. Like, he can't be a dick, and he doesn't play it well. But he does play the, the you know, his heart grows, and he's the good mentor, and that's what happens. He's, lear he's learning from these kids. And, you know, he starts putting his neck out for them, and he starts, you know, really being this good coach and teaching them fun stuff, you know, and trying to improve this team. The other part of the story is, back in, when he was younger, he was part of the best evil team ever in a sports movie. So if you know what I'm talking about, in sports movies, you had to have the evil team. These guys are the dicks. They're usually wearing black. They're the worst. And the Ducks have the best one, the Hawks. 
They are like the checklist of the evil team. They just want to win. They don't want to have fun. They're only in it for the winning. Because winning Pee Wee Championships is everything. And it's just so great how it's like, they're the so evil team. And so Gordon Monbay, when he was younger, was part of the Hawks. But he messed up at the end of one of the games and they got second place. Which, that's not good enough. We have to be first. So he has to deal with, you know, him letting down his coach, who's still apparently the same coach now that he's coaching the Ducks kind of thing. So, you know, he gets, you know, but he gets into his team. He gets them jerseys, jerseys, you know, makes them a real team. And it starts hitting the normal beats of a sports movie where they have montages of having crazy training exercises that, you know, no one does because they actually wouldn't work in real life. But, you know, it has... You know, team building exercises. They got to bring in the good guys, which I actually do that twice in this movie. And I'll get into that in a second. So they got to bring in the good players. You know, one or two guys that are just going to put this team on the next level. And through a whole bunch of shenanigans, which even involve an entire team getting sick, they somehow are the worst team all year, but they get to the championship. I think they win like two games, but now we're in the championship. But of course, it's against the Hawks. Ooh, the Hawks. And, you know, I think that's a gift wrap joke that someone should do. Probably better than me, more talented than me. But it's like, you have this rival team you're butting heads with, and at the end, they actually lose it earlier in the playoffs to a different team, and now you're in the championship against some team you're indifferent to. I think that'd be kind of funny. So, someone put, I'm putting that out to the world. Someone do something with that. So, of course, they win at the end. They, you know, it's... A shoot-off at the end, and it's big and dramatic, and they're all the champions, and it ends so great. And it is actually really great. It's a really fun movie, how earnestly they take this. Like, they're just so involved, and everyone's really taking this kind of serious. And it's not even so bad, it's good funny. It's just a fun movie. Like, just buy into it and enjoy it. Now, the main part of this, of course, is the fact of all the characters. And that's what, of course, what makes a sports movie. you got to have your stereotype characters all in place. And the Ducks are no exception. Of course, you got Emilio Estevez as Gordon Bombay, the mighty Duck man. Uh, but you got to have your players. So you got Charlie. He's the heart of the team. You always got to have the kind-hearted guy. You know, he's, he's not going to cheat. He's the good guy. He's maybe not the best, but he has the biggest heart. And, you know, Charlie is that throughout the entire movie. He's the heart of the team throughout the entire trilogy. And he's always around. And he's Charlie. Everyone loves Charlie. And, of course, you got Goldberg, who is amazing because he is three stereotypes in one. How did they do it? He's your neurotic Jewish stereotype. He's your Philadelphiaite, you know, stereotype. Like, hey, oh, fluffy eagles, yo, hey. Philly cheese steaks. 100% accurate accent, by the way. I am the master of voices. And it's also your fat kid stereotype. You always got to have the fat kid on your sports team. Take exception to that. But so he's also the fat kid stereotype, you know. And Goldberg stays throughout all the movies and is that. He's the Jewish, Philly, fat stereotype all bowled into this amazingness. And then you got Jesse. He's known for starting, you know, the flying V. And he is, he's your cool black kid. You got to have the cool black guy that knows the streets. And he has some cool stuff. And he says cake eater a bunch. I don't know what that means, but he likes to call people a cake eater. You're a cake eater. Cake eater. And, and you know, he's, he's Jesse. He's the cool black kid. Uh, you gotta have your nerd stereotype, so you got Averman, which is weird, because usually they go smart nerd stereotype. This time they go goofy nerd stereotype. He has the glasses, but he's not really smart, he's not good, he's awkward, he has funny lines every so often, and he's just, he's Averman. Uh, but yeah, it's kind of interesting they didn't go smart kid, like he doesn't have a computer on the bench or whatever, he's just awkward nerd. I'm Averman, aren't I? <laughs> like I said, they had to bring in the good players, too. And so you got Fulton Reed, who's apparently got a slap shot that can murder somebody. 
No one expects the hockey puck. You know, he's the badass that, you know, no one took seriously. He's not on any teams. They had to bring him in. And then you got Adam Banks, who, through some shenanigans with the uh, district lines, actually got him from the Hawks. And, you know, he's seen throughout the entire trilogy as this weird hockey god. But I never see him do anything extra or different. And he's honestly kind of a boring, bland character. Uh, but he's always, like, put up as, like, he's the good, he's the great guy. He does all this stuff. I don't see him do much. He's just kind of exists, I guess. But, uh, you know, but they pull him in. He's the good guy. There are some other players, of course. And, you know, there's, like, Guy Germain and Connie. Uh, the, the other fat kid. I don't know. They're, but they're really not all that special. These are the ones that had the real personalities and did stuff. The other thing to note, too, is uh, Little Pete from Pete and Pete is in uh, the first Mighty Ducks movie. So, the Mighty Ducks actually did really well as a movie and made a lot of money. Um, not compared to what you would make today, but it made a really good and fair amount of money for being a goofy sports movie for kids. So, they go with a sequel. D2, The Mighty Ducks. Which, that's my biggest complaint about this entire trilogy is the naming sequence. It's The Mighty Ducks then D2 The Mighty Ducks, then D3 The Mighty Ducks. And at the time, Terminator 2 came out and was big, and it was called T2 for sure. A lot of people called it. So they're going to be D2, but that's the official name. Like, Terminator 2 is Terminator 2 Judgment Day. That is the official name. This is D2 The Mighty Ducks. You, you couldn't come up with anything better? Just D2 The Mighty Ducks? Stupid. So at the end of the first Mighty Ducks, Gordon goes off and decides he's going to be a hockey player now. And you see him in the beginning of two in a minor league team, almost on his way to being in the pros. And hurts his knee and now has to come back in. And he works at the skate shop. Once he's back in town, he gets brought in to be the coach of the USA team of the Junior Goodwill Games. And D2 is definitely the one where they just go crazy. This is the nuts one. This is like the inflated ego duck movie. But it's great if you just go along with how goofy it is. So, and that being said, it's kind of funny because they bring in the Ducks team to be, you know, the USA team. But they just barely won a Pee Wee Championship. So, but now they're the best team in the country. What? Like, it's kind of goofy that way. Like, all of a sudden, they're just amazing, even though they they barely won, like, three games last season. It's weird. But they bring the team back, and, you know, they, they go off to the Junior Goodwill games, and they meet their new evil nemesis, the Iceland team. Now, there actually is a little bit of kind of interesting theory, or I guess history with this. Um, the year before this movie came out, uh, cool Runnings came out, and they had a good time with the evil Germans in. The evil Germans. What's you going to do, Jamaica? And so uh, they kind of, Disney goes off of that again. And also at the time in the world, uh, USA had a hard time with our generic villains. Because all throughout the 80s, every bad guy was Russian. That's just what they were. They were all Russian. But uh, in 94, when D2 came out, you know, uh, Soviet Union was, crumble, was crumbling. The, uh, you know, Berlin Wall comes down. So we don't know who our bad guys are right now. But, they, you know, they found with Cool Runnings having the East German team, oh, we just need an Eastern European accented team somewhere in there. So they choose Iceland. Iceland's your bad team. Which, I mean, this is what I picture with Iceland. I don't think they're the evil team, but yeah, they're the evil team because they're wearing black too. Uh, black's not part of their flag either. But, so they got their evil team. But this one takes it differently where they're really not bad. Um, just Iceland is better. They actually are like seen destroying a lot of teams during this tournament. Um, and they end up meeting Iceland halfway through. It's a double elimination tournament and it's all explained and crazy. So they meet Iceland and they get handed, you know, they get just get smashed. And, you know, they kind of lose their way because they're so ego inflated by being you're the Team USA. And Gordon Bombay is being, you know, pulled away because he's going to be a celebrity now. 
and you know they throw in all these cameos and he's going to be a celebrity and you know they just they've lost their way they lost their ducks way so then they then go through the whole process of being a sports movie again where they have their montage of getting back into it and having crazy training things that would never work and they bring in another awesome player that throws in something i'll talk about that in a second got a lot of a lot of deals with that and so they meet iceland in the championship game and uh even at the half they're losing at the hat or at the end of the second period so they got to bring in you know they got to rile themselves up and they bring out the fact that Disney has purchased an NHL team and named them the Mighty Ducks. If you follow hockey, the Ducks are still around, but they're not the Mighty Ducks, and they're not owned by Disney anymore. But yeah, they actually purchased a real NHL franchise, named them the An- Mighty Ducks of Anaheim. And D2 was a commercial for that fact. And at the end, they come out with what the ju- Ducks were going to wear as their jersey. And, you know, these are the big Ducks. And they got this new cool jersey, and we're all together, and of course they win the championship. And it's of course in a shootoff again. Because, you know, the most dramatic thing of a hockey game ever is a shootout. It's not. So they win the championship. And, you know, it's all, they're all the champions, it's all big and cool. And that's uh, D2. Now, here's the, what the characters were from the first movie. Now let's fix that for the second movie. There you go. So obviously not a lot of people returned. So now we got to fill in the spots with some more almost racist stereotypes this time. It's kind of bad. As you first get Luis Mendoza, the Cuban from Miami who's really fast. Ouch. And his little gimmick is he can't stop. He's really fast, but he can't stop. Uh, and you got Ken Wu, the Asian kid from San Francisco. Again, ugh. And he's a figure skater that they brought in to play hockey, which they did this in the first one, too, with a different character. Just because you can figure skate doesn't mean you can play hockey. And just because you can play hockey doesn't mean you can figure skate. Movies, stop doing this. That's like saying, like, hey, that guy switched out a hard drive and a computer. I'm sure he could, you know, hack the Pentagon. It's two different things. Ice skating or figure skating and hockey, two different, completely different sports. They don't cross paths. Stop doing that, Hollywood. Ugh. But anyway, I'm sure most people remember Dwayne, the the cowboy from Texas. <laughs> you know, he he's wrangling up them pucks. And his whole gimmick is he does all these puck tricks and he's a big flame, you know, big uh, cowboy and all that fun stuff. That's about all he does. He's Dwayne. And then you got Dean Portman, the tough guy from Chicago. Because only tough people come out of Chicago. The only, the only tough people, right? You know, he teams up with Fulton because Fulton's the big guy and they become the Bash Brothers and they're the big enforcers. And, you know, they're hardcore and they listen to vaguely rockish metal sort of music. It's kind of funny to see Disney do hardcore, though. And you got Julie the Cat Gaffney that, you know, is from Maine and... Just like Maine, she's very white and boring and forgettable and barely exists. Maine. Wait, that's not the Maine flag. Is that the Maine? I don't even know. You know what, Maine? Here's your new flag. Maine. And like I said, they brought in the new good guy, and that's Russ Tyler. And he's, everyone remembers, he does the knuckle puck. Which I'm not going to get to the physics of why a knuckle puck doesn't work, but I will explain one small thing of why the knuckle puck doesn't work. Here's a hockey puck. When it's shot regularly, it's shot like this at a goalie. It's hard to see going 80 miles an hour when that's all you can see. When it's a knuckle puck and it's flipping around like so, this is a lot easier to see than that. So this is my shot like this, then not like that. And it actually happens where they shoot it like this just because it flips up at a weird time. But it doesn't go all up and down and weird. It's Like I said, this one's the inflated crazy ducks. By the way, this is a Star Wars hockey puck. Uh But yeah, Russ is part of what brings them back. You know, they lost their way, so he takes them to their street. And, you know, because the street kids in L.A., they play street hockey, and they're hardcore and cool. And they listen to Tag Team. 
Remember Tag Team? Yeah, they were terrible. So that's, you know, D2 in a nutshell. It's the overinflated ego of the Ducks movies. Now, it didn't do as good as the first one, but still did pretty good, so they decided to do a third one. And they actually go a way different route with the third one and actually bring this one way more down to earth. Um, the third one deals a lot more with Charlie. Now, the idea is the Ducks are offered a scholarship to a private school as long as they're the JV hockey team which is already the start of grounding him more because now they're just the JV. They're not the greatest team ever. They're just the JV high school hockey team. And it deals a lot with the fact of Charlie learning that he's not the greatest, uh, learning to deal with new changes in his life, and also putting in the team before, his, before himself. And it's a lot of kind of adult, interesting things that they throw into this one. Of course, you still got your shenanigans and you got your, you know pranks and you got your evil team of the worst of the three but the varsity team and that's partially why it's lame is they're just the varsity team uh, but it does play out interesting because the varsity team's the bad team but you know obviously they shouldn't be playing them but this school has a exhibition game where the jv plays varsity and everyone has a good time supposedly so this whole movie's building up to them playing the varsity team in this pointless exhibition match which is an interesting thing. In this movie, they don't have a championship they win. They just beat the, the varsity team. So that's kind of weird. Um, and so, I don't have a whole lot to bring up about the third one. But it is a lot more down to earth. And I think, well done. Well way to end the trilogy. And that's why I think it's such a good trilogy. Is There's not a lot of you know ups and downs. They're all very equally solid with each other. If you can buy into the first one... You can buy into all of them, and you can enjoy these movies. Um, third one uh, didn't bring in any new players, and they actually lost kind of two players. Uh, Dean Portman isn't seen till the very end, and uh, Jesse is gone now. And they don't explain where he went. He just was erased, and they brought, you know, Russ Tyler took the mantle of the cool black kid. And yes, they keep all the stereotypes through all these movies. That's part of the fun! But yeah, these are such, you know, a really good trilogy that I really wanted to bring to light. And if you can indulge my nerdiness just a little bit longer, I have an idea for D4, The Duck's Return. <clears throat> so my idea for D4 would be Charlie's a failed hockey player now. He's, uh, you know, been trying to get to the pros and just hasn't been getting there. And during this time in his life, he had a wife and a kid, but got divorced, this kind of ugly divorce, and through him being obsessed with hockey, he loses, you know, his connection with his kid. And so he decides, you know, I need to, you know, connect with my kid again, and his wife's like, hey, you can be the coach of his hockey team, and Charlie becomes the coach of the New Ducks hockey team on, back in the Pee Wee Leagues. And he starts trying to build up a relationship with his son again, and, you know, his son's not really having it, but he's still trying really hard because he's Charlie and he's got a good heart. And he turns out, you know, it's the same Pee Wee League, so you got the Hawks are back because you got to have, ooh, the Hawks. And, you know, they're back, and the, the coach of the Hawks is one of the old Hawks that lost against the Ducks in the championship. And, you know, they start going back and forth like, oh, you only lucked out on us and blah, 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 and it starts the whole rivalry back up again. And it ends up that the, the, the Hawks challenge the Ducks to a, a replay of the championships game. The championship game. So now it's about bringing in all the Ducks again and finding them. And, you know, I like, you know, so it'd be cool to have Goldberg. He's running a deli now because that's your stereotype. And I'd say Jesse would be one of the dads of the hockey team. And maybe him and Charlie have been bud you know, buddies or something like that. I don't really know what to do with Jesse. You know, I always imagine Averman's now a rich off of something, but Averman's this rich kid. Um, I really imagine Fulton being a desk jockey, you know, just, you know, a beaten down cubicle, like, oh, I can't play hockey anymore. And the way he kind of looks now, I mean, he's, he's a lawyer in Hell's Kitchen now, so he kind of fits the role. And you got to have Banks, since he's the hockey god, Banks is going to be in the pros, which is important. 
So then you have, you know, montage of the Ducks being old and trying to play hockey again and have some fun stuff with that. And, you know, this goodwill Charlie's building up with son starts happening because he's teaching him this and he's joining the Ducks and it's all this good stuff. But then, uh, so then the Ducks play the Hawks and they, of course, beat them. And, but that's not the end of the movie. What it would happen... But the, after that game, uh, Banks would go up to Charlie and be like, hey, I think there's a spot for you on our on our minor league team if you want to be, you know, if you want to try out. And so it begins Charlie deciding if he wants to go back into hockey because if he would do that, he would lose his son. And it would all culminate with him playing his first game, but that first game would take place during the Ducks championship game, and he's missing his son's game for himself, and his son's all pissed, and does the, you know the whole stereotype of leaving the game and coming to see his son win the game and all that fun, fluffy stuff. Now, it sounds like it's a little cheesy, and it is, but that would be the love of it. It would just go into that nostalgicness of how goofy it is and how fun... Just a silly movie. And I think it'd be great. I would love to see a D4, but as D3 is, or as the trilogy is right now, it's really good. And I suggest giving another fair chance and just go with it and just enjoy it. I love these movies, obviously. And, uh, you know what, they're just a really good inspiration. Because, you know, they, they teach you, if someone tells you, you can't do something. Just fly together! Just when you think they're going to break apart. Hard and the sky is black. Just fly together. And the chips are down. Just fly together. And you're lying stone in the gutter. Just fly together. When they come, and they will. Just fly together. And you reach over and put your hand into a pile of goo. That was your best friend's face. <laughs> okay. Uh, Just fly together. And when you can't think of a good way to end this bit. Ducks fly together. I'm Sexy Matt the Pharaoh Wizard, and until next time, it's knuckle puck time! <laughs>